Hello anatomy friends, this is Dr. Alsup, and in this video we will be discussing the joints we need to be able to identify in the forearm, wrist, and hand session. Starting with the radiocarpal or wrist joint. This joint is formed by the articulation of the distal end of the radius, or the articular surface of the radius, and the proximal row, at least three of the four, of the carpal bones, so those wrist bones, all except for this small pisiform, which is a bit more anteriorly placed, so it's not directly involved with this articulation. Now, obviously, these images are not to scale. This radius is a little on the, the too large size, but, but I did want to just kind of put them close to one another to get an idea of at least kind of the osteology and how they articulate. But as with most joints, there will certainly be accessory structures providing stability and support. And while we're not having you identify any of these ligaments individually that you see shaded here, we do want you aware that similar to other joints, they're certainly present for the wrist joint as well. So you can see the radia distal radius right here, those carpal bones would be deep and you can see ligaments kind of protecting this region here. Moving to the joints of the hand, I think these are so much easier to conceptualize when looking at the bone. As we were just discussing, there will of course be ligaments and tendons throughout this region, but for our purposes, if you can understand what bones are articulating to form these joints, we will be very pleased. So starting proximally, there are the carpometacarpal joints, of which there are five. And these are formed by the distal row of the carpal bones articulating with the metacarpal. So again, these are carpals, these are metacarpals, and the joint right here between that distal row and the metacarpals will be your carpometacarpal or CMC joints. Two, um, through three, two through five of the CMC joints are plane joints, but this first carpometacarpal joint has considerably more mobility being a saddle type joint. So it's capable of flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, and circumduction. So a lot more mobility associated with that first digit. Next we reach the metacarpophalangeal or MCP or MP joints, which are between the metacarpals and the proximal phalanges. So these would be the MP Sometimes you see MCP joints. These are, um, these are the joints that kind of form that knuckle region. And these are mostly conjoloid joints, so capable of those same motions that we just discussed with the saddle joint, just to a slightly smaller degree. Then we reach the interphalangeal joints. So these are the joints between the phalanges, in which for digits two through five, there are two sets of interphalangeal joints. In the first digit, there is only one interphalangeal joint because there is not a middle phalange. So this is just referred to as the interphalangeal joint. But in the other ones, the joint between the proximal and the middle phalanges are called your proximal interphalangeal joints, or much more fun to say, the PIP joints. And the distal interphalangeal joints are formed between the middle phalanges and the distal phalanges. And these are referred to as the DIP joints, or the distal interphalangeal joints. All interphalangeal joints are hinge joints, so they're just capable of flexion and extension. Excellent. I thank you for your time and attention here, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.